Ninja. The police uses breathalyzers to detect motorist levels of alcohol consumption. The kind used by the police require the different people tested to blow into the same unit. However, two innovators from Makere University felt that the breathalyzers currently in use are not very accurate and they could potentially transmit diseases between users. They have now come up with a different design for the breathalyzer, which allows for separate straws for each user. This breathalyzer is a brainchild of Mavin Mugume, a first-year student of information system and technology. It is called Project Kaseke, which means a straw in Luganda. Mugume explains the three main components in his innovation. We use three major components, a microcontroller at Mega, uh, the input module and the output module. So we have the sensor, since the amount of alcohol in the breath, reflects it on the screen and then transmits the data. Mugume worked with Isaac Mubiru to program the device so that it detects even the smallest traces of alcohol from the breath. For purposes of demonstration and confirmation, Isaac acted as our drunk motorists. <laughs> when the device is switched on, it asks for the driver's permit, which is entered before one blows into the machine that is embossed with sensors inside. The first time Mubiru blew into the machine, the device showed green and displayed drive on, meaning no alcohol detected. And this is meant to, to increase the user friendliness. As we know, some, some officers actually don't know how to use these devices. We carried out a research and found that out of 100 drivers, only one can be able to read what values this device shows, the current Kaunyem device. But with ours, there will be a simplicity. After taking half a bottle of some spirit, Mubiru blew into it again. This time it signaled red and recommended that the driver be arrested. The alcohol detector has also a charging port, a data port, which are connected to the computer for data entry and programming. Uh, it's made up of the GSM module, the, its connectivity to the internet. So now the GSM module enables this device to connect to the internet. In that, there's a SIM card in the GSM module, which enables it to connect to the internet. So now we designed a database which picks data sent from the GSM. So now this database can intake the alcohol level, say you're caught drunk and you're above the 0 0.9 uh, milligrams per liter alcohol level as stated by the Uganda law. Yeah, so if you're above this, the database automatically, the GSM automatically sends data to the database. Yeah, so the moment the police officer presses hash, yeah, your data is automatically sent to our database, which is designed in conjunction with the police database. Although it may seem easy, Mugume shared some of the challenges they faced. To, to come up with just a simple project, we have to import to ship in these electronic components, which takes time and money. Despite the challenges, Mugume still wants to improve his technology. Fingerprint scanner onto our device, such that instead of entering the driver's permit number, a fingerprint bitmap is taken. We know some drivers move with duplicates of their driving permits, and some don't move with them. So with a fingerprint scan, the information of your biodata can be sent to a central database, and this information can be used to bring back your national ID information, your driver's permit information, and all the necessary information to be sued in court if you are caught above the law. Project Kaseke, uh, according to the innovators, this device could cost about 150,000 shillings. This means it can be bought for domestic use and also some companies that would want to curb drink driving. But in Uganda, government is always quick to applaud such kind of innovators, but do nothing to support them or render them support that would propel them to greater heights. And for now, Marvin and Isaac, if nothing is done, their innovation might not even get to the records for future reference. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV Makere.